that thy word is a what? Let's look and see. Let's pray. Father, Lord, I ask that you anoint me as I pray uh, your word to your people today. Father, Lord, let my sins be as many, be, be as scarlet. Lord, I ask that you wash me uh, white as snow by your blood. Lord, that, uh, that I be, be standing here perfected in your sight. We thank you for the blood of Jesus, not only for me, but for your congregation, Lord. We thank you, we plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of us. We thank you for the cleansing power found in your blood. We thank you for the power to overcome uh, sin, death, hell, and the grave through your Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Lord, for your instructions, Lord, that you might give us the path to righteousness, Father, and that we would be found worthy, Lord. We'd be found clothed in righteousness in the wedding garments uh, when you do return to call us to our eternal reward with you. And we give you all the praise. Father, I pray that not one member of this church, not one person here today will be lost, but, Lord, that we will all receive our salvation and our rewards and we be, be sealed Lord for that day. We give you all the praise in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, our Lord, our Supreme King, and all God's people said amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, some people don't like to hear the pastor say that he's a sinner, but you know what? I'm, the Bible says all men are liars, you know. People stand up and say that they're not, they never sin. Right. All right. I'm not saying I walk in sin. Do you understand? Yes. I say that I'm fallible like you are. Yeah. And I get caught up in things sometimes. Yeah. And then oh, the Holy yeah. Spirit has to say, correction, you know? And I have to fall on my face like every one of you do. And I'm going to ask the Lord to forgive me and correct me and right. wash me in the blood of Jesus and get me on the right oh, path right. and keep me from falling again, right? right. Because I'm a man and I'm human. And, uh, and, so, and sometimes um, the enemy comes in he comes in and he brings things into us that we think we've overcome or gotten over right. right That's right. But Jesus just wants to be shown mighty in our lives again. Amen. He just wants to show he is the conqueror. Yes. He has conquered every situation in our life. And sometimes when he when the enemy comes and tries to bring something to you, Amen. it's because God is going to use that use you in that area to reach other people right. that are God. dealing with the same thing. And it's not always comfortable. No. It's not always comfortable, but it's necessary sometimes to be transparent Amen. before the Lord and to allow Him to use you in those areas. Amen? Amen. And you get the victory. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen? Amen. Have you ever taken a walk in the dark? All right. Yes, many yes. times. You know, as I get older, my eyes get a little bit dimmer, okay? I find myself more and more uh, reaching for my cell phone to turn on that flashlight that I have on my, on my cell phone. Right. You know, uh, even when I go out to dinner sometimes, I'm sitting in a restaurant or something, and I have to turn on that flashlight to read the words, amen? Yeah? But, what, but what does a light do? Once you have that light in front of you, it illuminates your path, amen? You know? It allows you to see where you're going, and you don't stumble, you don't trip. You know, when, you, when, you, when you're walking in the darkness and you're walking down a staircase and you don't see the next stair, it's easy to stumble and fall. Amen. That's like we walk through life and there are, are uh, pitfalls in our way. It's easy for us to stumble and fall. Or there might be a stumbling block in our path. Or a stumbling Amen. block is something that we've dealt with over and over and over. And it keeps getting put in our path to, to trip us up. Amen. Right. But if we have continually been in the Word of God, when the stumbling blocks come, they, we will avoid them. <clears throat> because the light of God, the light of the Word, the light of His instructions, the light of the Torah, will show the path before us and help us to avoid the pitfalls. Help us to avoid the stumbling blocks. Help us to avoid falling down. Amen? <laughs> Direction and protection. We can trust God's Word to guide us. Amen? Amen? There is not a thing in the Word of God that you have to be leery about following. That's right. Every word, every jot, every tittle, everything given in the Word of God is for our instruction, for our correction, right? That's for our right. reproof, for our edification. Everything we can trust the Word of God. Say, I can trust the Word of God. I can trust the Word of God. See, the instructions found in the Word of God are true. Amen? Amen. There is no, there is no doubt that the instructions found in the Word of God are true. Amen? Amen. We can trust the instructions given to us in that Word. It's right. our foundation as the Lord Jesus Christ is our rock. Amen? Right. He is our rock. But what, who is Jesus? Jesus is the living what? Word. Word. Or the living 
for us. The living instructions in our yeah. life. Amen? Sure. But he came and he showed us how we should live. But he was also telling us everything in the scripture was given for our spiritual growth, edification, and in a way to please God. Amen? Amen. His word will not cause us to stumble. If you follow the things in God's word, it's not going to trip you up. Right. Now, the enemy might come in and try to trip you up. He might try to be deceit, deceiving and try to twist things around a little bit. But if you get along with the Holy Spirit and you ask him to rightly divide the word of truth to you, to explain what that word is saying, to read it in context, to follow it in the context it was given, you will not get caught up with the doctrines of men. That's right. Man. That's right. Did you hear that? You will, not come, you will not get caught up with what? Doctrines. The doctrines of man. What did Yeshua do when he came? When, when, what was, when, even in the first miracles that he, he uh, performed, he was making fun of the doctrines of man. That's right. Do you know, and many of you don't know this because you haven't studied rabbinic law, okay? That's right. But the teachings of uh, the rabbinic law, the, the rabbis had taken the teachings of the Torah and the teachings of the town of the world, and they expounded on it. They thought they could make it better by studying it in depth, you know? And out of this, there were some good teachings, but there were a lot of nonsensical teachings, you know? Right, right. And they had gotten to the place to where certain things that were not found in the Torah were being taught as sin. You know, things that God did not say were sin were being told to them were sin. One of those things was putting wine in a clay pot. Right. That was considered a sin. Okay? It was not considered a sin to put water in a clay pot. That was the only thing you could put water in was a clay pot. was uh, not considered a sin. But it was considered a sin to put wine in a clay pot. So what did Jesus do when he turned the water into the new wine? Huh? What did he do? He turned it into wine in clay pots. And they drank it up gladly. Amen? Yeah. So this is the best grape juice we ever did have. Amen. <laughs> so they 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 turned the, he turned the water into wine in a clay pot. And he was saying, the doctrines of man mean nothing. Right. Well, there you go. They mean nothing. That's right. Look to me for the truth. Right? Right. Same thing when he healed the man on the on the Sabbath. You know, he healed the man with a withered hand on the Sabbath. And they were they were ready to jump on him. And give him a hard time because he, he did work. So once again, they defined God's law in human terms. They were right, yeah. doctrines of man. Right. Okay? But he said, which one of you, if your ox falls into a ditch on the Sabbath, wouldn't take him out? That's right. How much more valuable is a man to God? They took the, the, the divinity and the love and the grace and the favor of God and they turned it into foolishness to where they couldn't even. They said God himself was sitting for healing somebody on the Sabbath, right? right. Is that crazy? Yeah. yeah. Now, you have Jesus also and his, his um, disciples. We have another example. It wasn't a miracle. But it was Shabbat. They were walking through uh, the, the fields, right? And they were, God had provided for the poor, the people, or the strangers, the sojourners, those who were traveling. He provided for them by telling, instructing the people not to completely take their fields, but to leave uh, some thing gleaning, you know, things for people who were gleaning, and they had to leave the edges, right? And so they were walking through the grain fields on Shabbat. Now, now Shabbat, as a tradition, the, the women prepared the meal. Well, these are abandoned men. They were traveling. They had no women with them. They were hungry. They went into the field. They were getting their grain. They are going to have their grain. They are going to go rest. They were honoring right. God anyway. Right? They were honoring God anyway. Their heart was to honor God. Right. Jesus, the Son of God, God in the flesh, God with us. Amen. So they, they could, he couldn't do anything wrong. All right, and so he was showing that they were getting the drink, and they became the God accused again by man, oh, telling them that they're not supposed to be doing this. And Jesus said, Wait, the Sabbath was made for man. Man wasn't made for the Sabbath. You see, he was, just, he was showing us that the instruction of the Shabbat was given for our own edification. But he was God. He didn't even need the rest, amen? And the people were with him, they could rest in him. But they were just gathering the grain to have on their, their Shabbat meal. They were not sinning, amen? There's a, a deeper lesson in that. There's a deeper, right, deeper 
understanding of that. If I misspoke, uh, we'll go into that a little bit more depth another time. Now you have you have also the blind man that was healed where he took the, the clay and he put spit into it and put it in his eyes. You know, uh, they had taken the commandments um, against immorality and uh, they had they taken them out to the nth degree. And so it was considered um, immoral for a man to put his fluids into another man. Okay, follow my grip without me having to say too much. But the, the command against immorality was just that. It was not against healing somebody. Right. And Jesus took his spit and he put, put it in the clay and he touched the eyes and he healed them. And they came against him and said he had committed a great sin by putting his fluids inside of another man. Oh my gosh. And, and you see, once again, it was a man-made doctrine. Right. Amen. Amen. Taken out of context. Yeah. Okay. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us and show us or reveal to us how to apply yeah. God's yeah. instructions to our daily yeah. lives. You gotta not rely on the doctrine of man. His word will not cause us to stumble. Right. His word will make our path clear, and his word will illuminate the pitfalls. Can I get a witness on that? In a ditch, amen? Psalms 119.11 Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. How does that work? When you have God's word in your heart and you start to misstep into a place of sin, what happens? The Holy Spirit takes that word and quickens it. Amen? And quickens it to your mind and quickens it to your heart to where you can rightly divide the word of truth and you can you will know if you're going in the wrong direction. And you can ask the Holy Spirit to help direct you. Amen? Yeah? Yeah, as the blood of Jesus, people I just think it's a good habit. I don't think it's we get into the road to, you know, we need to be able to rest in our salvation. But at the same time, there's there's something good in what what Jesus said in to through John in chapter two of uh, Revelation. He said, uh, this one thing I have against thee, that you have forgotten your first love. Yeah. And um, I believe the revelation of that, he had just said in the verses earlier that they had, they had maintained or continued for his name's sake, for the name's sake of Jesus. He didn't, they didn't forget Jesus. But what was their first love? Their first love was the instructions found in the word of God even before Jesus came to them. Okay. So what he say? He says, repent and repeat your first love to my path. The highway is a lamp to my feet and a light unto the path. So God's word will keep us from sin if we hide it in our hearts. How? If we, when we are members of the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit resides within us. Amen? The Holy Spirit, we are baptized into the body of Christ through, uh, we, are by the, we are baptized in the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Then we are baptized into the Holy Spirit by Jesus. He says, we come with fire. Amen? Baptize us in the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit will bring to mind God's word when we are tempted to sin or when we have fallen into it. Sometimes you fall. You see, we're not supposed to continue in sin when we read in God's word. This is but if we do, we have an advocate with the Father. Amen? Right. We have Jesus who's at the right hand pleading for us. Amen? God. But God's word will strengthen us. Yes. Amen? Yes, it will bring us strength and encouragement. Let's look at... at uh, Psalm 119, count the number of times thy word is used. Amen. Okay. Psalm 119, we don't have to do it right now. That's something good for you to do at home. So come next week and tell me how many times thy word is used. But, Pastor, you really want me? Yeah, I do. Because I want you just to. The, the point really isn't to tell me how many times thy word is used. The point is for you to get into the word. The word. There and for you to understand how important it is for us to remain in the Word, and to yes. stay in the Word, and to study the Word, yes. and how much more so now that we are in uh, such a wicked generation, amen, right. that, that even the elect shall be deceived if we don't stay in the Word of God, stay controlled by His Word and influenced by His Holy Spirit, 
we can get off course. I want to point you to the Word of God. Above all of man's doctrines, above all of the, I think uh, Pastor Dan, he said, the prosperity doctrine just destroyed the Pentecostal movement for many years. Amen? I, I would agree with that. You know, this Word of Faith, uh, the, the Word of Faith and the prosperity doctrine, you know, people got off track. They took a truth and they tried to make a the truth, you know? Right. The truth is Jesus Christ, amen? All the way through the book, you know, from Genesis to Revelation, as we know it, that it's Jesus preached, you know, he came to reconcile fallen man to God. He accomplished the task. We receive his gift of salvation, and he's coming back for his glorious church. I mean, that's the sum total of it all, amen? Yeah. That is the sum total of all. But what we need to be is in study of his word so that we can grow in him, so that we can reach yeah. others. Let me tell you something. If you knew that your whole neighborhood was going to go up in flames because there was going to be a bomb dropped on it. I'm just all making right. up some right. scenario, right? All right? If you knew the whole place was going to go up in flames and no flesh was going to be saved, but you knew a route to safety and a place where everybody in your neighborhood could go and be safe and enjoy life even better than they've ever had it before, would you keep that to yourself? No. no. Let's extend it to your family. If you knew that everywhere your family lived was going to be destroyed and that everybody was going to die instantly and forever, but you knew there was a way to get all of your family members and all of your friends and even the just acquaintances that you go you know, pass by, and you could spare them right. this awful end of calamity in the natural, wouldn't you make sure you told all your neighbors about it and you all got right, them to safety right. and you continued it in the, in the instructions to get to safety, you know? Hallelujah. It's the same way with God's word and salvation. Amen. We've been given the solution. We know that the wages of sin are what? Death, you know? Amen. And that uh, eternal death is nothing. And the word God says not to fear those that can, uh, that, pardon me? Amen. Not to not to fear those who can the ones that can destroy this body, but the one that can throw us into the lake and find the second death. You know, have holy reverence for God. You know, and we need to realize that we have the answer. That Jesus is the answer. We have the answer. The Word of God teaches us how to be pleasing to God. And we need to live and walk in that word. We need to put that word in our heart. We need to study the word. Like I said, here's a little home study. List the benefits of God's word in your own words. Yeah. You know, this would be a good thing to actually to bring to a, a Bible study on a Thursday night. Everybody go through Psalm 119, list in their own words the benefits of uh, serving God, and, and share that with one another. Amen. We are supposed to be iron sharpening iron, amen? It's not supposed to always be just from the pastor or the teacher. God can use each and every one of you to sharpen and to grow each other, amen? But we're also supposed to be reaching the lost, amen? We have some work to do. We have a lot of work to do. I have some work to do, amen? I have a lot of work to do. But we have got to move forward with the, the word of God as our foundation and the faith in Jesus Christ, knowing that he is our cornerstone. Amen? Holy oh, yeah. John 17, 6. I have manifested thy name unto, this is Jesus. This is Jesus praying for us. Mm -hmm. you get this? This is the prayer Jesus prayed directly for us. You should, you should read this over and over. You should like print it out. You should put it on your wall. You should put it in your mirror. You should put it in your car. You should just carry it around and meditate on it for a while. Because if Jesus prayed it, I think it's a pretty good prayer to understand. Amen? Praise God. John 17 says, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them to me, and they have kept thy word. I have given them thy word, and the word hath hated them, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. You know, I want to read that whole 
I don't want to just go through my, my scriptures at the evil of John chapter 17, starting with verse 6. I'm going to read that whole thing here. Then we'll go back to that. All right. Hallelujah. It's pretty different by the way, but it's fun. 17, right? Yeah, John 17, starting with verse 6. I think. How does that sound like that? Is a lamp unto my path and a light unto my feet. Thy word is a lamp unto my path and a light unto my feet. And then how does it go? Hallelujah. So if you could keep the rest of the way to that song. Do we have the other? Not right now, actually. Hallelujah. Okay. What version are we reading now? King James, that's fine. Okay, very good. Now let's read this. You don't have to read it out loud, but I'm going to read it here. I have manifested thy name into the men which. Uh, we've got to shrink a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I'm not getting the whole scripture. <laughs> okay, there we go. Praise the Lord. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou givest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now, they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them. <coughs> and they have known surely that I have come out from thee. And they have believed that thou didn't send me. Do you really have this in the, um, let's change versions. Go to the true life version. Because I think a lot of people get lost in the this, the thousands of these, and this one. There's a lot of them in this. Amen. I just want you to hear the plain message from this prayer. Praise God. Praise God. There we go. Here we go. I have made your name known to the men of this world that you gave me. They were yours. You gave them to me. And they have kept your word. Now they have come to know that everything you have given me is from you. The words which you gave me, I have given to them. They received them and truly understood that I came from you. And they believed that you sent me. I ask on their behalf, not on behalf of the world do I ask, but on behalf of those you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one just as we are. While I was with them, I was keeping them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except for the son of destruction so that the scripture will be fulfilled. But now I'm coming to you, I say these words while I am still in the world, so that they may have my joy made full in themselves. I have given them your word. And the world hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I am not asking that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. But they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Make them holy in the truth. Your word is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I make myself holy, so that they may also may be made holy in truth. I pray not on behalf of those only, but also for those who believe in me through their message, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. So also may they be one in us, so the world may believe that you sent me. The glory that you have given to me, I have given to them, that they may be one just as we are one. I am them, and you and me, that they may be perfected in unity, so that the world may know that you sent me, and love them as you love me. Amen. Father, I also want those you have given me to be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory, the glory you gave me, 
For you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world did not know you, but I knew you. And these knew that you sent me. I made it known to them and will continue to make it known so that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. Amen. That's the prayer Jesus prayed for us. But I believe that it was so important to understand that in that prayer, he said, he said, he talked about the disciples, he said, they have kept your word. They have kept your instructions. Yes, Lord. You know, they have followed your word, they have followed your Torah. We need to not go into bondage, we just need to understand that God has given us his instructions for a reason. We are to follow them, and when we fall short, we have to lean on the blood of Jesus. Amen. Oh, we, lean, we don't have to lean on the blood of Jesus. We get to lean on the blood of Jesus. We get to be cleansed by the blood of Yeshua and what he did for us on Calvary. And that's, that is, that's the most important thing. But because of grace, what did Paul say? He said, should, should grace, should sin abound, or should grace um, to continue in sin so the grace may abound, God forbid. Amen? So when the Holy Spirit brings to your recollection an area of your life that is that you're failing in, you should put it under the blood and ask the Holy Spirit to help you overcome. You should make a teshuva. You know what a teshuva is? A turning around. Okay. Repentance. It's the word used for, for repentance. A teshuva. We should turn around and go a different direction, not just continue in the same area. When the Lord shows us in his word that something is not right for our lives, we should turn from it. We should make it to Shuva and go in the direction that he has for us to go. Right. Amen. 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 Every believer should be extremely familiar with that. Let's go on to the next slide. Praise the Lord. Let's go on. Just to the last slide. The life application. Go on. To the end. Hallelujah. Go back. Go back. Go back. Spirit is in your prayer and the Holy Spirit is in your walk, He will bring 
into your memory the Word of God because the Word of God is our foundation, even as Christ Jesus is, because Christ is the living Word. Amen. That's right. Am I preaching the truth? Am I preaching the truth? Yes. Is Christ the living Word? Yes. Is the Word of God our foundation? Yes. Is Jesus Christ the chief cornerstone and yes. the, the rock of our salvation? Yes. Amen. Yes. Do we rely upon Him? Yes. Did He tell us the Holy Spirit would, would teach us all things and bring things to our remembrance? Yes. Yes. Did He say that we can overcome sin yes. the same way He overcame sin, death, and all the grave? Amen. Yes. Because the same Spirit that is in Him that rose Him from the dead should be in us. Amen. It's that spirit that's going to quicken us at that time when he returns for his church. And those of Christ, those that the dead of Christ shall rise, like in the song, those that are alive will be quickly changed and meet in the air. If we don't have the Ruach, but it's a, I, I, I love that word Ruach HaKodesh. It's what we translate Holy Spirit. But I love the actual literal meaning, the, the spirit of the wind of the Holy One. The wind. And you know, on the day of Pentecost, there was a sound like a mighty rushing what? Wind. And Ruach means wind, the, the force that the, the pushes you into a, a direction to hold, if you allow it to. There you go. Let's put our sails up and catch the wind of the Holy Spirit in our life to push us in the direction He is pushing us. But we have the ability to either accept the Word of God and the direction the Spirit is leading us in and the, right. and the gift of salvation that Jesus has so freely given to us, we have the ability to reject that or accept it. That's right. Amen. What are you going to do? Are you going to put your sails up and let the wind of the Spirit direct you to be led by the teachings in God's Word and covered by the blood of Jesus? All right. Wash clean. Amen. Amen. Pray God's Word. Let His Holy Spirit direct you to the Scripture when you're going to pray. And claim those promises because it will encourage you. Right. Your word says, you know, right. what, did, what did God say? Come now, let us reason together. Yes. He likes to know you're in his word. Yes. He likes to know you're wanting to follow his instructions. He likes to know that. That's why he says, come now, let us reason together. Amen. He likes that. God wants to have a relationship with you. Praise God. He wants you to talk to him. Even when you're wrong, talk to him. <laughs> you even understand something, talk to him. You know, I've been going through a, a kind of a, not a crisis, just a, a growth spurt, I'm going to say. But I've been going, but as I've been going through this with the Lord, I've been talking to him about every single thing. Talk to him about it. He knows anyway, right? That's right. He, you can't get through your problems unless you cast your cares upon him. That's right. He cares for you, amen? You can't overcome if you don't take it to the overcomer. Praise God. If you don't let the overcomer overcome yeah. in your life. Amen. Yeah. Talk yeah. to him. Have a relationship with him. You're his daughter. You're his son. He yeah. wants yeah. to hear from you. He wants to hear that you're in his word. He wants to see that you're in his word. He wants to have that word made alive in your life. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Pray God's word. Let's stand together.